The former acting CIA director Michael Morell is facing lawmakers right now describing his role in the response to the Benghazi terror attacks that killed our ambassador and three other Americans. Morell testifying why he ignored reports from U.S. personnel, including the CIA's top officer on the ground, that there was no protest before that attack on our compound in Libya on the anniversary of September 11th. Four Americans, as I mentioned, died in that attack, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. Their family members continue to wait for answers to this day as to what happened. Morell also being asked why he did not correct the record after U.S. Ambassador Susan Rice appeared on several of the Sunday morning shows blaming the attacks on a spontaneous protest. Why was there no attempt after uh, Ambassador Rice went on five or six Sunday morning talk shows to ever correct the record? That sure. in fact it was more an attack than it was a protest. I don't follow you, sir. She went out and she said it was solely because of the YouTube video. Uh, and later we learned that no, it was more an attack than it was about the YouTube video. And there was never an attempt to correct a record. Well, sir, there's a difference between what it was, which was a terrorist attack, and what motivated it. Those are two completely different things. No doubt it was a terrorist attack. To this day, we still don't know the motivations of the people who conducted the attack because we haven't caught any of them. Joining us now is a member of that House Intelligence Committee holding the hearings, New York Congressman Peter King. He's been good enough to step out of the hearings to talk with us for just a moment. A terror attack that's motivated by a film, Congressman, does that make sense to you? No, and that's why there's so much anger and frustration on the committee and among the American people. The administration has not told the truth from the beginning, and Michael Morell was part of that, uh, that whole process all along. Now, he gave a lot of excuses today and a lot of reasons. The fact is, to believe him, you have to believe uh, basically uh, uh, everything that's contradictory to the facts. Uh, for instance, uh, Morell, Michael Morell was sitting in the Intelligence Committee hearing room in November of 2012 when we were trying to find out who changed the talking points. He sat there quietly. We had no idea that he was even involved in the talking points until nine months after the talking points were done. And yet he was before the committee time and again, never volunteered that at all. So again, even when you just heard him say now to Congressman uh, uh, Miller, where he, somehow he's trying to say the difference between the terrorist attack and the reasons for the attack. Hey, bottom line is Susan Rice and the administration told the American people it arose out of a video and a demonstration. They never mentioned terrorism at all, and that's the reality. They can't rewrite history. But Mike Morell was a career uh, CIA officer. He had served under the Bush administration. What would be his motivation, you know, as an apolitical intelligence guy uh, to rewrite the talking points or, or to manipulate the talking points to make the administration happy? Well, the fact is, at every turn, he did to what the administration wanted. And as I pointed out, and again, he may have an, you know, an explanation for this, but he's now in a very prominent firm, which has a number of people from the State Department, from the administration who are there, and uh, he uh, is doing very well with them. Uh, you know, uh, whether or not that's the reason, I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to endear himself. Maybe he thought that he had a chance to become the next CIA director. Because remember, during this time, General Petraeus was under investigation, as we found out later. So it could well have been that uh, Mike Morell thought he had a chance to become the head of the CIA. The, the fact of the matter is the CIA was not listening to its station chief and not listening to the people on the ground that night who said this had nothing to do with, with the video. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. Everyone on the ground, everyone on the ground, including the CIA station chief in Libya, said clearly that uh, this was a terrorist attack. This was an attack. It, it did not arise out of a demonstration. They made that clear several times during that week. And as uh, uh, Congressman Nunes brought out, every, every uh, person on the ground, at every level, in the Defense Department and the CIA said that this was an attack. There's no evidence of a demonstration whatsoever. But most importantly, as you said, John, the CIA station chief said it and said it again and again that this was, uh, that this was an attack and he did not buy into the narrative at all that, or the story that this was uh, arising out of a demonstration. And, and the horrible irony here, it seems to me, is that four Americans are dead, their families are left looking for answers. The president promised that we would get to the bottom of what happened and we would apprehend uh, the people who killed our civil servants. And yet the only person ever 
to serve any time in connection with this whole incident right. is the guy who made that Innocence of Muslims movie. Absolutely disgraceful. And uh, the fact is that we know who did it. Uh, we have very good indications who did it. We cannot take the action against them we want to because under the law you have to be in Al-Qaeda to be attacked in the way that it should be done. And uh, this administration is refusing to say that these people are Al-Qaeda, even though all the evidence clearly suggests that they are part of an Islamic terrorist movement. So you have people walking free, people who murdered Americans, because the administration is not one to say that they are members of Al-Qaeda or should not, be or should not be attacked under the grounds we have to attack Al-Qaeda. We will let you get back to the hearings. We appreciate you stepping Thank out you. to take time to talk to us. And We'll be continuing to follow those hearings as well. Thank you, Congressman Peter King of New York.